You're watching RT 2 p.m. here in Moscow. Welcome to the program. We'll be continue with our coverage of the situation in Egypt, where the Egyptian military has been calling for protesters to end demonstrations after more than a week of unrest. And this comes after Egypt's President Hosni Mubarak announced that he would not seek re-election in September's vote. But the U.S. president has called for him to begin transition immediately, which is a shift in rhetoric towards the leader it backed for nearly 30 years of his rule. Where, well, RT's Paula Sleer joins us live now from Egypt. Well, Paula, now we know the protesters seemed unsatisfied with Mubarak's pledge. What is the situation now on the streets of Cairo and at other cities? Well, protesters continue to flood downtown Tahrir Square. They say that their demand for Mubarak to step down immediately has not changed. A short time ago, the army separated a group of about 20 pro-Mubarak supporters from a group of about 1,000 demonstrators. And we're hearing similar reports coming in from other cities around Egypt. We know that overnight there were clashes of that kind in Alexandria. Now, Egyptian state television has just issued a warning that they suspect there will be more violence. We're also hearing from the army in a statement it's released on that television station calling on protesters to end this demonstration. Now that is a turn from what we heard from the army earlier. Earlier they said that they would not get involved. There is also a warning on Egyptian state television about foreigners who apparently are handing out documents that are anti-Mubarak. Now nobody here really believes that, but it certainly sends out a strong signal that the Mubarak camp is gearing up and is fighting back. And I can tell you as a foreigner working here, I've been up and down the streets of Cairo for the last few days and today was the first day that I was stopped at every army checkpoint and asked to show some kind of ID. Now the pro-Mubarak supporters that are out there on the streets are according to demonstrators being paid but when you speak to these pro Mubarak voices they say that the country should afford Mubarak some kind of dignity to stay in office until September that the country at least owes him that the demonstrators saying that it is long past time for them to actually give him that kind of time frame asking for it is an insult now the international community has been weighing in the latest the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov who has called on the world community to allow Egyptians to decide for themselves. We want to see Egypt as a stable, thriving democratic state. We want the current social, political and economic problems to be resolved as soon as possible through peaceful means. But it's up to Egyptian politicians and the people to decide how this could be done in practice. We don't think it's helpful to impose solutions from outside, given ultimatums. Egyptian political forces need to find a consensus. Well, Paula, for much of Mubarak's rule, the U.S. has been supporting him, has been backing him, but now it seems to be frustrated and is changing its rhetoric. What's driving this change? What's going on here? Whether the U.S. is changing its rhetoric is really a question that people here are asking themselves. On the one hand, we've heard from the American President Barack Obama an urgency for Mubarak to step down, to listen to the will of the people. Obama saying that in a 30-minute tele telephone conversation with him, he urged the Egyptian president to call for free and fair elections as soon as possible. But at the same time, what Egyptians are witnessing is what they're interpreting as American support for Mohammed al baradei Now, he has been touted as the alternative leader to head an interim government. And when you talk to Egyptians here, they say that that is still the hand of America interfering. They do not believe that there is much difference between the policies that Mohammed al baradei will introduce to the country and those that Mubarak introduced. A lot of anger among protesters when I asked them how they feel about al baradei He is not also a figure that is well known here. He's much better known on the international scene where he is the former head of the International Atomic Energy Agency where in 2005 he shared the Nobel Peace Prize with that agency. But al baradei for himself, at least for now, saying that he wishes to head this interim government and that he's managed to bring together all the opposition voices here in Egypt. But really what we're hearing from the streets of Egypt is what we've heard from the Russian foreign minister, people here saying, let us decide for ourselves. And the United States and other countries, keep your hands out. All right, well, thank you very much for that indeed. RT's Paul Asli are reporting on the latest from the Egyptian capital, Cairo. Now, Brazilian journalist Pepe Escobar says the U.S. is pressuring Mubarak is hypocritical after 30 years of blind support. It's, it's very, very complicated for the U.S. because it's a tightrope walk. This guy, after all, has been propped up by the U.S. for 30 years. Uh, the police state that he set up and tortured virtually 
everybody that stayed in Egypt that was progressive, or otherwise these people were exiled, this was also supported by the U.S. So uh, when Hillary Clinton says that we've been uh, encouraging Mubarak to do reforms, this is absolute nonsense. They started doing this probably two days ago, not 30 years ago. Well, British journalist Yvonne Ridley told RT that Egyptian people will no longer let the U.S. pick the leaders for them. The Egyptian people are very, very suspicious of anybody who has been endorsed, supported or aided by America. And you can't blame them. And they also have made it quite clear that they do not want any more meddling from the U.S. And America has said, you know, well, we give $1.3 billion of aid every year. The ordinary Egyptian people don't see one cent of that, so they're not bothered if America does withdraw uh, this funding because uh, they certainly do not uh, benefit from it in the slightest. I really hope that the Western powers don't underestimate the Egyptian people yet again. You know, they're very intelligent, they're very politically aware, and uh, they will choose the people who they want. And if America doesn't like it, well, it's going to be uh, tough. Well, what's behind?